Let's go back to Jump Street and talk about your initial discussions with WWE and Vince McMahon and coming in. Mm -hmm. What? How? How was it pitched to you? What did he tell you was going to happen? What was the plan? Do you mean like the, trying to transition from WBF to coming in? No, initially when he called you or you called him from what, WCW. Oh, so we're going back. Yeah, the, just take a step back and then we'll sort of then move forward. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, I had a year remaining on my WCW contract. And um, at the time, um, I felt like WCW was sort of struggling. Flair had, mid, I think mid-year, I was going to wrestle him for the world title in Baltimore. And Flair, that's the deal where Flair went to WWF at the time with the, his, his, his belt. So we were, we were left basically beltless. Mm-hmm. And uh, I became the world champion. It was funny in the, in the, uh, they didn't have time to make a belt because it kept them hoping, we all hoped, that Rick would stay with us. So we're leading up to the whole day of the pay-per-view in Baltimore, Sean. We didn't have, we didn't have another belt. So they, they made kind of like a fake belt. They go, look, when you win the, I ran up wrestling Barry Windham in a cage. Uh-huh. He was number one contender since Rick wasn't there right. or the belt. And they said, you're going to bring Harley Race and do everything we can. They brought Harley in, still hoping Rick might show up, but he didn't. Right. So they brought Harley in. They were to put a bunch of stuff around it. We needed all the help we can get. It was wonderful. Harley came in. Yeah. They go, and let's use the belt and use Harley's finish because he's going to be your manager after that. Mm-hmm. So let's use the belt on Barry and pile drive Barry on the belt and win the title. Because I was, I was a baby face at the time. Yeah. So we'll make you an instant cha- world champion with Harley Race, your manager, using his finish and cheating to win. So, which was, you know, we were all kind of scram- in the scramble mode. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, but they told me, but don't hold the belt up towards all the camera guys. We're inside everything, because they go, we'll it's not, it's not the real belt. Yeah. Not that we were going to really fool anybody, but I thought that was kind of humorous, yeah. uh, the way it all came down. So, uh, at what point do you make contact with Vince McMahon to be, to be brought in? Now, you've got a year left on your WCW contract. This is the reason you had to be put into WB, WBF because you couldn't be shown on WWF TV because it was a direct right. competitor of WWF. So to move forward, the remainder of the year, the company was in so much turmoil that they were really, they didn't know really, I felt like they weren't sure which direction they wanted to go. They were making cutbacks. They even talked about letting Harley go at the time. And I was like, man, this isn't good. Mm-hmm. Not a good sign. Yeah. Uh, Ted Turner always taught us we'd always have wrestling, but... Vince McMahon had always been the clear number one at that point, obviously. Mm-hmm. So I, I always had aspirations of if the opportunity came to come there. So I actually called Vince on the phone and said, if I have a year left of my contract, if I became available for the bodybuilding, if I took a year off and really trained and got in the best shape of my life, I always wanted to she would be like to not be traveling on the road and eating in airports. The airport food was awful back then, if you want to date back to 92, 93. I believe it. And it's a lot better now. It's actually fabulous now. But I, uh, I said, man, we could, I could do the WBF and do the show and be like a guest poser. And, and, and I go, I just kind of threw the idea to him. And he said, you know, let me think about that. And he called me back. Man, it must have been a couple weeks later and said, I, 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 think, I think it's just very interesting. I think I'd like to maybe pursue this. And obviously, I still had to um, get out of my contract with WCW. But at the time, what I told them was that I was burnt out, which I was. And uh, I've been wrestling hard over 300 nights a year since I came in in 86. I told them I needed some time off. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, which was a lie at the time. Because I'd already pretty much had my sights set. And Vincent pretty much agreed that I could come in under a WBF contract. Mm-hmm. With the hopes of then, or well, with the understanding that later. Oh, well, I was going to sign a one-year WBF contract. Instead of, so instead of finishing my last year with WCW, I would, I would sign an agreement. And since I thought they were in the cost-cutting mode, I was one of their biggest contracts. I said, I'll give you that one-year contract. Mm. Just let me do things outside of wrestling. I won't wrestle. So they were, they were, they were cool with it, mm-hmm. which gave me the opening for Vince to sign me as a bodybuilder, not as a wrestler. Right. So uh, it was now, kind of a win-win at the time. I could stay on one train. He's a, he was going to take care of me financially. Not like a big contract, but pay me to stay home and train. Yeah. You know, so it was like, I was like, wow, this is great. 
The narcissist gimmick, when is that proposed to you or is that something you come up with? No, uh, Vince and I developed a great relationship. We did a, a show called Body Stars. We spent a lot of time together and he went me over to his house and, and we'd hang out there and we'd work out together. So we developed a great relationship that year of the bodybuilding show, mm -hmm. contract of the shows we did together, the time we spent together. He just felt that Lex Luger was well known, but Vince always likes, he's one of the best ever putting his own little touch on things. And he definitely felt it'd be better for me to come in as a heel. And I always, I, I always loved being a heel. So I wasn't, I was totally with that anyways. And um, he felt that, um, I don't know who came up with the idea, whether it's him or somebody in the office, but it was all their idea hmm. to come in as a narcissist. He said, with your body, and we'll, we'll really dr dramatize your arrogance on camera. And he goes, we'll, we'll call you a narcissist, and you'll just, he goes, we'll have a lot of fun with that. Um, were you excited to be paired with Bobby? Oh, that was, uh, that was a surprise when I got to that. It was in, Sa I believe, Sacramento. And they said, we're going to put you with Bobby the Brain Heenum, who's a, obviously a legendary guy. They told me that the day, of the, the day of the show when they introed me. Oh, wow. I didn't know that was part of the plan. Yeah. But obviously, I was all, all up with that, Sean. Yeah, well. Bobby's one of the greatest manders ever in pro wrestling, so... For his stamp of approval, it was funny in the back because Bobby was like, well, what do you, you want me to go out there with him? He's going, what is he going to be doing? I go, he's not wrestling, he's just going to be posing. And he goes, you're going to like take his cape off, you're going to point all his, all his, all his great body parts and everything. Bobby was kind of weird about it. Bobby was funny. He goes, well, I'm not, I'm not a bodybuilder guy. He goes, I, he goes, I don't want to look like I'm queer or something. Out there, it was, it was funny Bobby's reaction in the back because he was kind of uncomfortable with Tell everybody how magnificent my, my, my legs and quadriceps are giving these like bodybuilding words to use. And Bobby was kind of uncomfortable with it. It was funny. He thought it was, it, it, was, it was humorous before we went out there. But of course, Bobby went out there and knocked it out of the ballpark. While you're still in WBF now in January, you uh, actually, when do you sustain the injury where you needed the titanium plate? Uh, you I was just talking about the ride over. I was uh, almost either two weeks out or one week out before the WBF show. I was going to be the guest poser. Right. I was in the best shape of my life, man. I was so bummed, but it was a near fatal wreck. I mean, I had Motorcycle? bones hanging out. Yeah, I had on with a car. It was unbelievable that I survived that. It's a miracle of God, uh -huh. Sean. I mean, we were both going 45 mile an hour on like a one and a half lane road, country road, at dusk, and we, didn't, we never saw each other coming. Right. I avoided the car. I, I tried to go off the road to avoid the car, and actually, it was going to hit me on the right side. I was going to... I don't know if I hit it hand, that was going to be really bad. I picked my right leg up and, and just, uh, it would have crushed my right leg, but threw me 150 feet into the woods, missed every tree. Wow. It was amazing. I lost a lot of blood, bones sticking out, and my arm was, didn't even look like an arm anymore. But that did keep you from posing, obviously, in, in the big pay-per-view that, that they did, right? The... It, was a, it was an unbelievable recovery, mm. because I, I, I think it was maybe seven or eight months later, I'd let the bone heal for four or five months before I can even lift weights again. So I had to sort of scramble to get ready for that mm -hmm. display of the, the narcissist. I had about two and a half months to train after not being able to work out at all for four and a half months. What the hell was IcoPro? That was their big product. Remember that? IcoPro, was, a, was it a powder? It was a supplement. Sports supplement line. It was a, it was really, when you think about it, when you look at all the companies out there now in sports nutrition, I mean, it was, a, it was a brilliant idea. I don't know what happened with it as far as the marketing and the product, but really it was, and with the cr young, young guys, are what, you know, now the crowd's energy drinks, they're always mm -hmm. looking for stuff to work out and get the six pack. So really, it, I thought it was a great idea.